welcome back. My name is Jim Caseman. We're talking about how to get to know God intimately. And, and of course, the only way to do that, we have to examine the entire scriptures and find out why God does what he does and who he is and all of that. And so in order to do that, we need to examine the entire scriptures, not just a favorite subject here or there that you might have. Let's talk about the whole Bible. So right now we're talking about supernatural beings that includes human spirits as well as angels and demons. But right now we're talking about angels and that's where we left off in the last session. And we said in the last session that angels do not die. And the last verse we used was Jude chapter 6. And the angels who do not keep their proper domain but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. And of course that's talking about evil spirits and they um, they do not die. And of course I, I, that takes us back to 2 Corinthians 4.18. We've been there a number of times. But listen to this. It says in verse 18 of 2 Corinthians 4. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So the things that we see, that's this physical dimension. And with our physical senses, everything we see, touch, what have you, this is all temporary. And it's about another thousand years uh, from now, this whole universe and this physical dimension is all this is going to be uh, consumed in fire and it'll be no more. So the things of the natural realm, the physical realm, are temporary. But now the things of the spirit are eternal. They never cease to exist. And that's, we're talking about hell here a moment ago. Hell is for eternity. The lake of fire is for eternity. And hell had to be created initially for Satan and his fallen angels because angels are spirits. And the spiritual things never cease to exist. So they live for eternity in hell. And that goes for human spirits. We are human spirits. And of course, we live for eternity. Now, we have, we're, we have physical bodies that we live inside of, but this physical body is going to eventually, there's death in it, it's dying, and eventually it's going to stop breathing and turn to dust. It's temporary. This body, this physical body of mine is temporary. I need it to, as a human spirit. I need this physical body in order to maneuver in this physical dimension. But I am an eternal being. I'm a human spirit created in God's image and likeness. I live for eternity, either in hell or heaven. It depends on the choices that I make. And so it's the same with angels. They're eternal beings. It's the same with the devil and evil spirits. They're eternal beings. The devil and evil spirits never cease to exist either. They live forever in the lake of fire. All right. So then, angels are spirits. And do, they do not die because they are eternal beings. And I guess for those who probably have just tuned in and are not real familiar with everything, we're in the scriptures clearly talk about spiritual death and physical death. And physical death, that's when your body ceases to exist and returns to dust. Spiritual death is not that way. Spiritual death seeing, means that you have the nature of Satan, you have the nature of sin, and you're separated from God. You're dead spiritually. Now, Jesus came and paid the death penalty for our sins. And when we ask him as our Lord and Savior and to come into our heart to be our Lord and our Master, then we are born again. We become new creations in Christ Jesus, a brand new species that never existed before. We're made alive unto God. We were dead in our sins, separated from God. That's spiritual death. But then now I am born again, and now I am alive spiritually. I have God's nature. I no longer have Satan's nature, the nature of sin. All right, so then. Okay, now, angels are also innumerable. And I come back here, here to Hebrews chapter 12, and in verse 22. And, but you have come to Mount Zion, and the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels. And so it's innumerable. Uh, I don't know, I made a, um, let's see, innumerable. I, I made a note here and I'll, I'll come back to Psalms 104 and pick it up and, 
in verse 4, 104 in verse 4, and uh, who makes his angels, okay, that's not exactly what I thought, but who makes his angels spirits, his ministers, a flame of fire. All right. Okay. So then, they're innumerable. You can't even count them, in other words. There's so many. And, of course, when we talk about this, the, the, the spiritual dimension, it's vast. It's huge. And it would take innumerable angels, you know, just to maintain all of that. But anyway, we'll, let's move on. Then we can, angels are, of course, uh, are, are intelligent. And I made a note for Second Samuel in this one. And here we are. Second Samuel chapter 14 and, and verse 20. To bring about this change of affairs, your servant Joab has done this thing, but my Lord is wise according to the wisdom of the angel of God to know everything that is in the earth. Now this particular angel, of course, is the angel of the Lord, obviously is intelligent <laughs> because the, the, angel, the angel of God, well, let's see, according to the angel of God to know everything that is of the earth, the angel of God normally uh, under the Old Testament is uh, Jesus taking on the form of an angel. And of course, he'd have all wisdom. But angels also um, know a lot more than we do. All right, so then, although angels perform ministry on earth, their main habitation is in heaven. Okay, so then uh, I have here in, in my notes, so I'll just keep on going. <laughs> There's a lot of scriptures. Michael, Gabriel, and Lucifer, Lucifer being Satan, are the only angels whose names appear in the Bible. However, it is likely that all spiritual beings have names. And uh, it doesn't say it, uh, but however, in Psalms 147, verse 4, it tells us that God has names for or the stars. Now, God, through his word, and by the Holy Spirit, has created, and now, you know, in the natural realm, the hubbiscope and everything else, uh, scientists are estimating that there's about a bit, there's billions of galaxies out there. Now, galaxies, we, uh, the galaxy we live in, of course, um, um, that's just one of billions of galaxies, and then it says that, and then the most recent uh, article that I was reading, that they figure there are billions, be like Bravo, billions, trillions, billion trillions of stars. And, uh, whoa, and according to Psalms 147, and in verse 4, God has names for all of these stars. And, um, 47 and verse 4. I'll just read it to you and, and make sure you're not. He says here, he counts the number of the stars. He calls them all by name. So, um, <laughs> billion and trillions of stars. And of course, there's innumerable angels. But if he has names for the stars, it's just logical to assume he has names for the angels as well. I praise God. I mean, it's so huge. We're, we're, we're a little dot in the, not even a dot, in this whole universe. The earth is just a dot. And here we are on this little dot. And, it, and there's so much out there. Once our bodies die and we go to heaven, I mean, we'll just be blown away at how huge this whole uh, spiritual dimension is. Well, we get a little clue of, of how big it is. Um, well, here we are, out of time. All right, I got to rambling there, but praise the Lord. We'll see you in the next session. Meanwhile, you just have a glorious anointed time until then. Amen.